Good morning, friends. Today I want to talk a little bit about what it means to have blessed eyes and blessed ears. Sometimes we look at what's happening in the world and we think that looking at what's going on around us and hearing that information, it's not a blessing. Seeing what's going on around us, wars, rumors of wars, difficult times, uh, oppression, financial uh, difficulty, or even just the fuel price, we might say, this is not blessed. Or you might have heard a very bad report, a medical report, or going through difficult times, sickness in your body, or maybe you've lost a loved one. And you might say <coughs> uh, that my eyes are not blessed, my ears are not blessed. I want to read to you what Jesus Christ defines as blessedness when it comes to having blessed eyes and blessed ears. It says here in Matthew chapter 13, and Jesus is now speaking to his disciples as he's about to explain the parable of the sower and what that would mean. He says, Blessed are your eyes and blessed, uh, be, excuse me, it says, Blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people l longed to see what you see, but they didn't see it and hear what you hear. But they didn't hear it. Then he says, listen to what the parable of the sower means. So what Jesus is doing here is he's answering them on request, uh, wherein they requested explanation on what the parable of the sower means. Then he says to them, blessed are your ears, Blessed are your eyes, because they hear and see. They hear and see what was prophesied. And then he says, here is the explanation of the parable and explains the kingdom and understanding of the kingdom and so forth. So what is a blessed eye and a blessed ear? Is one who hears and sees and understands the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So I want to say to you that if you can look at the uh, birth of Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and understand what that means, and it simply means that he is Lord and that he has conquered sin and death, and that we are saved by his doing, righteousness has come to us. If we understand the gospel, you're blessed. That is what true blessing is. The word blessed means to speak well of. Now, we might be spoken well of by many people around us, especially if it goes well with us. People might speak well of us, say, oh, you are prosperous, you are so blessed, or your children might do well, and, you might, and, and it might be said that you are blessed. And people, even people of the world that don't believe in the Lord Jesus, will call you blessed. But Jesus himself and God calls someone blessed when they understand the gospel. And I think the best thing that we can do in this life is to have our minds lined up with the truth of God's reality. If we can line our reality up, or let it put this way, if we can live in what God's reality is about this word, blessed for instance, it will save us from trying to produce by our own works to get to a place of blessing, or it will save us from trying to change our circumstances before our heart would declare us as blessed. I want to read this again. It says, blessed are your eyes. Why? Because they see, they perceive. And your ears, why? Because they hear. There's a scripture that says that there are people that see and they don't see. We can read that uh, in Isaiah. And the quote of that is also here in Matthew 13. It says, you will be ever hearing but never understanding. That is what it means to be cursed, if you want to think of a curse. It's not cursed to have an old car. It's not cursed not to go to university and maybe have to work, uh, work for a boss. 
That's not what cursed means. You are not cursed when you are going maybe through a bit of a difficult time. You're not cursed because you live in Zimbabwe, Zambia or South Africa instead of living in some rich country somewhere in Europe or uh, in America. That's not what defines cursed. Jesus himself quotes Isaiah here and he says, You'll be ever hearing but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing but never perceiving. Now, he goes on in verse 16 and says, Blessed are you, speaking to the disciples, because your eyes see and your ears hear. The worst thing that can happen to a person is not to understand the gospel, not to perceive what Jesus come to do for you if it's in plain sight. And as you're listening to this message, I'm sure you do understand the gospel. You know that God loves you. You know that Jesus Christ has come to take away the sin of the whole world. You know that as what you were included in the disobedience of Adam, you are included in the obedience of Christ. You know that his death is your death. You know that his resurrection is your resurrection. You know that the hope that Jesus had to be raised from the dead and to experience absolute equilibrium between uh, him and God, wherein the fullness of the God he dwells in him bodily, is your hope. And that that is your hope by his doing, by his promise, not even your own works. You know that. So I want to say to you, you are blessed. You are absolutely prosperous. You are well spoken of by God. When Jesus was speaking to the people, quoting, the, uh, quoting Matthew 13, obviously he was speaking to people like the Sadducees, for instance, which were a, was a richer group of people, the Pharisees, people that were devoted to the law. They had good clothes, they were eating well, they were prosperous, they were respected in the Jewish communities. But Jesus said that they're not blessed because they're not seeing, they're not understanding. So I want to say to you today, if you know and understand that Jesus died for you, he was buried, he was raised, uh, he's seated at the right hand of the Father and you co-seated with him and you see that union as true about you and you understand this gospel, you are declared blessed by God. It's wonderful for me to say to you today, in the name of God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to God's word and his understanding and his logic and his reality, I can declare to each one of you today that enjoys this message, enjoys the gospel, understand the gospel, who has heard and seen that you are blessed. Amen.